Mount Everest, the tallest point on Earth. For a sighted person, climbing Mount Everest is one of the greatest physical challenges on the face of the Earth. Ever since I went blind, it's been a dream in the back of my mind to climb the world's tallest peak. When we started thinking about climbing Everest, a lot of the Himalayan experts sort of came out of the woodwork and said uh, I'd be a liability up there, that I'd kill myself, I'd kill my team. There are always going to be people who think you're crazy, and then there are also going to be those who do share your vision. The truth of the matter is Everest was a very, very difficult climb. It was dangerous. I knew that only 10% of the people who try Everest make it to the top. And for every six people who summit, I've heard one dies. First time I met Eric was at a trade show. He asked me, he said, have you ever thought of climbing Everest? He said he never climbed Everest, but he wanted to. PV is probably one of the best leaders that, that um, I've ever seen in real life. Probably one of his strongest uh, attributes is his energy and positive attitude, and he would never have people do things that he wouldn't do himself. A great leader um, is not afraid to share leadership. As a blind person, I knew I could never get to the summit of Everest alone. And what would get me to the top wasn't necessarily technology. What would get me to the summit were the people that I surrounded myself with. Most teams are torn apart by egos. There were some people I wanted to bring on the expedition that I decided not to bring on the expedition because I knew they could not be good team members. PV wanted people who knew the Himalayas well, who knew Everest well. But equally important, I feel, was getting a series of climbers that Eric has climbed with in the past that may or may not be great Himalayan people, but Eric trusted. I think in the success of an expedition, trust is the most important ingredient. Uh, without trust, there's nothing. If you can unify people with one vision, it becomes that rallying point and, and it becomes a team that's unstoppable. We were all committed to a single purpose. And that single purpose was helping Eric get to the summit of Mount Everest. So there was a big meaning to the expedition. We knew that unless Eric could climb through the Kumbu Icefall effectively, quickly, and safely, that he stood no chance of climbing Mount Everest. My first trip through the Icefall was the hardest day of my life in the mountains. Every step could kill me. Well, 13 hours through the Icefall is terrible. He was thoroughly exhausted, as tired as I've ever seen a climber in his life. There was blood pouring out of Eric's nose. It was all over his clothes where he had been hit in the, and hit in the face and almost fell in a crevasse. He collapsed inside the tent and I walked out and the rest of the team was outside. I told him, this can't happen. Unless we can change this, unless we can get Eric through this thing faster, we might as well turn around and go home. Unbeknownst to me, Eric was listening to me. He wasn't asleep. And he told me later on, he says it was one of the most down periods of time in his life. I told Eric, you know, do you think you can do this? And he's like, I don't know. And I said, well, if you don't think you can, you're not going to, you know? I forced myself to sit in front of my tent and envision myself and my team on the top to actually believe myself forward. Giving him more time and practice, he, he got better. A lot of my improved success had to do with my teammates. They began to understand how to tap certain things to, and give me information and um, how to communicate real succinctly. Unclip that ATC. Nope, nope, nope. Not that way, Bubba. There you go. Before you knew it, we were, we were speeding through there. We were passing people, which was cool. Sighted people, other teams. On summit day, he actually made it from base camp, past camp one, all the way to camp two in less than five hours, which even for a sighted climber is an incredible feat. We set up a nightly tent meeting because it was a very effective way to get a lot of communication across. And I'd ask people, do you have problems? Are there concerns? What do you think? I think if you really pay attention and, and give people credit and, and don't belittle people and you just listen to what they say, it's really effective. So if I do have to turn back, um, I'm just curious, I mean, what's the, what's the plan? I'll feel totally bad because I'll ruin probably a someone or one or two person summit day. This whole thing's about you. Dude. This whole thing's yeah. about you, man. 
hopefully everybody realizes that we've got a prerogative here and has to get Eric to the top. Above Camp 3, you enter what's called the death zone. It's where your body has stopped acclimatizing. You gotta get to the summit now as quickly as you can. I'm nervous. What are you nervous about? Uh, no reason. No reason. It's not like we're gonna be climbing to the top of the world. Our plan is to leave Camp 4 around 8.30 p.m. and climb all through the night. If things work out, we hope to make summit by late morning. It's dark. For the first time, we're kind of on Eric's turf. Leaving on summit day, we got up, we're ready to go, everybody's feeling good, and I felt cold. The higher I got, the sicker I got, and it dawned on me that I had malaria. And I've had malaria eight times. I caught it originally in Africa, and it keeps coming back when there's a lot of stress. TV is coming down. He's feeling really bad. The goal of the expedition was not to have me summit. It was absolutely the most difficult decision I've ever made in my life. I had spent two years of my life working on this expedition, planning on this expedition, dreaming about standing with Eric at the summit. And that night, he did an exceptional thing. You know, when he realized that if he kept going, he was going to be a liability. He's a great leader, and any leader knows when to step back. When this storm came in really fast from the south. We're still waiting for the weather, but the uh, weather is very bad. All my planning, the one thing I forgot was to appoint an assistant team leader. We were leaderless. Some of us wanted to go forward, some of us wanted to turn back. Uh, we're in a crisis. It's really amazing that when you really need it, leadership seems to spring from the most unexpected places because Kevin, our base camp manager, you know, his job was to set up tents and organize gear and to do less glamorous things like clean the bathroom tents. He had taken it upon himself to understand these very complex weather patterns and charts and graphs that he was seeing over the internet. Mike, I know you guys are in a storm right now. Um, it's snowing, it's very windy, but from down here, it is clearing up. Just push forward, you guys are gonna do great. Uh, you have good weather within the hour, over. It certainly helps to hear them say, hey, it's getting better, hang in there. And as we're moving up about 28,000 feet, Brad yells down, you know, the ropes are buried. And the only way to get them out is to, to dig it out and then you pull it. It sounds like an easy thing, but when it's crusted over and you're only breathing a third as much oxygen, you know, it, it's a pretty tough job. Those guys probably really didn't need those fixed lines. They probably could have walked right past them and kept going, but they knew the rest of us needed them. Um, and they knew Eric needed them. I remember processing that, sitting at that one spot and thinking very clearly, if I do this, I'm not gonna be able to go to the top. I remember that last tug of the rope and pulling it, and poof, I saw it shoot up to the south summit. And I remember just being flooded with joy. I was so deflated because I knew that he had just sacrificed his own attempt for me. He's like, you know, I gotta go though, right? I said, I, I want you to, that's why I did this. I don't even think they questioned themselves. I think they just went out there and did it. I watched him hop off the back of the South Summit and I thought to myself, there is no way I'm gonna let that blind guy go stand on top of the world and have to hear about it the rest of my life. So I hopped right down behind him. he made it and then I heard like everybody made it on the team I was thinking man I could never have hoped for better success than that we all did it and that's that's even cooler than if I went over and just did it on my own I don't think certain people are destined to lead and others are destined to follow I think leadership is inside everyone my team on Everest may not have been a bunch of superstars but but they stepped up and they led 
when it mattered. I don't think I'm very different from anyone else. I think everyone has a yearning for greatness inside them. That ability to reach out into uncertainty, and in a sense, I guess, to climb blind.